Let's talk direct variation, inverse variation, and joint variation. Direct variation is simple enough, right? Direct variation is usually what we mean by proportionality. Direct variation tells us there is some constant k, and you can take one of your two variables, for simplicity, let's call it x, multiply it by that constant of variation k, and generate a corresponding value. We'll use the variable y for that value. Another way to put this, and this is where the proportionality comes into play, is that any given y compared to its x value will equal any other given y compared to its x value, or what we often indicate with some subscripts, y1 over x1 equals y2 over x2. And there are other ways to set up this proportion, but again, what matters is when we compare a y value to an x value with division, that is when we set up a ratio, all of those ratios are constant. In fact, that's really the key to direct variation. Direct variation is about constant ratios. Whenever we have constant ratios or whenever some context would lead us to expect constant ratios, we're looking at direct variation. Inverse variation works a little bit differently. So with direct variation, because we have that proportionality, as one item gets larger, so does the other item. Or as one item gets smaller, so does the other item. Contexts where we would expect the opposite to happen, that as one item gets larger, the other item gets smaller, or of course vice versa, that's what we call inverse variation. And inverse variation does not work with constant ratios. Inverse variation works with constant products instead. So while there is a way to set this up as a proportion, I think it makes a lot more sense in inverse variation situations to set this up as a series of those constant products. In fact, whatever that constant product is, is what we now call k. Still our constant of variation, but this time not coming from the ratio of y to x, or not being used to multiply by x to generate y. Instead, that constant of variation now is coming from the product of an x with its y. Just briefly, let's think through some example scenarios. Direct variation would be something like, okay, I have a certain number of chickens. Maybe I have five chickens, and in a day, those five chickens can lay 10 eggs. They're very talented chickens. If I were to go to the chicken buying store and I could purchase some chickens that I would expect to lay eggs at the same rate, more chickens would mean more eggs on my farm. Again, five chickens corresponded to 10 eggs, so I would expect something like 10 chickens would correspond to 20 eggs, or 14 chickens would correspond to 28 eggs. In that case, my constant of variation is two. I'm getting two eggs per chicken, and so I can just multiply the number of chickens by two to get the expected number of eggs. But now imagine a slightly different scenario. Let's say that the five chickens I have over the course of a month take 10 bags of feed to keep full and healthy and whatnot. If I were to increase my number of chickens, but not increase the feed, so I can only afford that 10 bags of feed in a given month, then as I increase those number of chickens, I'm gonna have less time that I can keep them full for. Those 10 bags won't go for a full month anymore. Maybe they'll only go for half of the month. The more chickens I have, the less amount of time the feed will be good for. Or I could think about it the other way around. If I decide to have dinner with one of my chickens one night, not like dinner with my chicken, but dinner with my chicken, you know what I'm saying? Then as I reduce the number of chickens, I'm actually going to increase the amount of time that those 10 bags of feed will last. If I go all the way from five chickens down to just one chicken, I'm gonna be able to make my feed last for five times as long. This is what we would think of as inverse variation. One of the quantities is getting larger, the other is getting smaller, and the constant product in that case would be something like the five chickens times the one month that my 10 bags of feed are gonna feed them for. I have, in a sense, five chicken months worth of feed, and whether I distribute those to one chicken over five months or 10 chickens over just half of a month, the product between the number of chickens and the amount of time that I can feed them for remains five. But what if I have a scenario, like with my chickens and feed and time, where I'm increasing two of the quantities and seeing how that affects the third? That is, I'm not just comparing two things at a time, which I know I could do with either direct variation or inverse variation, but instead I'm comparing all three quantities at once. Typically, if I can do this in a sensical way, I can do it with what's called joint variation. Joint variation lets me combine inverse and direct variation all at the same time. And I can use this with scenarios that, again, the context would allow, 
for comparing three different quantities at once. We still have a constant of variation, but now it's going to be equal to one of those quantities, we'll call it z, divided by x times y, the product of the other two quantities, or the reciprocal, it doesn't really matter, it kind of depends on the context which way you wanna set it up. But what matters is anything that we are multiplying is related by inverse variation, because that's going to represent a constant product. But anything that we're dividing instead, that's going to be a constant ratio and their relationship is going to be one of direct variation. There are several ways to approach problems like these. We could try to set up a k equals something times something over something, or again, upside down if we prefer, and then use that constant of variation to solve whatever situation they've given to us. But one of my favorite ways is to use a table of values and kind of hold one item constant and think about how the other two are changing. For example, consider this problem that I have over here. I'm using the Delta Math platform for this problem. It's an absolutely fantastic platform. They've got written solutions. They've got video solutions for the different problems that you can tackle there. And if you ask me, the guy who does video solutions there is very good. Anyway, we've got this question. We're going to attempt to set this up with a joint variation situation. I can finish the problems in one chapter of my physics textbook in eight hours. Suppose that the problems in each chapter take the same amount of time to solve and that there are 30 chapters. How many people working together at the same rate as me would it take to finish the problems of the whole book in one day? All right, well, first of all, what are our three quantities here? Because what we're going to do is set up a table where we keep track of all three of them. In this case, I would say, okay, so we have the number of people who are working together. We have the number of chapters that they're attempting to complete. And we have the amount of time that they're using in hours. The initial scenario we were given has one person completing one chapter in eight hours. So we're gonna use this information to, in some sense, determine the constant of our system. But again, I don't wanna set it up as an equation just yet. I just wanna think through, well, what would happen as we say, increase the number of chapters? To do that, let's hold the people constant for a second. So let's say that we keep using just one person. If I wanted that one person to be able to do two chapters on their own, how much time would they need? Would it take them more than the original eight hours or less than the original eight hours. I can tell it would take them more. If this same person is going to do two chapters, then it's going to take them twice as much time. It's going to take them 16 hours. What this tells me is that chapters related to time is a direct relationship. And so I'm just gonna jot that down up here to remember for the future. Chapters to time is direct variation. Now let's do that again, but this time instead of holding the people constant, let's hold the time constant. Let's say that I'm gonna keep my amount of time at 16 hours, but I decide you know what, I would actually like to see if I could get four chapters done, or maybe I should put it a different way, how many people it would take to get four chapters done in 16 hours. If one person could get two chapters done in 16 hours, then as I increase the amount of work, what's gonna happen to the number of people? Would I need fewer of them or would I need more of them? If I'm increasing the work, I also need to increase the number of people provided that I'm holding that time constant, which again is the whole point here. I hold one item constant and I think through how would that affect the other two items. If I wanna complete, again, twice as much work as before, but I can't increase the amount of time now, I need to increase the number of people. Specifically, I need to increase them by a factor of two. And so four chapters in that same 16 hours would require two people working together. Once again, I can tell that is a direct relationship. The number of people compared to the number of chapters for the work that they're getting done. If one gets bigger, the other also gets bigger. That's direct variation once more. So what does that mean about people to time? Let's go ahead and hold chapters constant now. Let's say, all right, we want to get four chapters done. So we're gonna keep that the same. But good news, there are actually eight people available to help us out. So some people got out of class, they come over to the library, they're gonna help us out. We've got eight people working together now. If we're gonna hold the work constant, so it's the same four chapters, but now we have more people helping us out, our job is gonna take less time. 
This is very distinctive of these situations. We're gonna find two sets of two quantities that relate to each other directly, and then the other set of two quantities, the other possible pairing, we're gonna find relates inversely. If I have four times as many people available, the work is gonna take me a fourth as long as it did before. And so I should be expecting, provided I'm still tackling those same four chapters. So again, notice in each case here, we hold one of the items constant to think through how the other two get affected. If I have four times as many people helping, the job is going to take me a fourth as long as it did before. And so I can see now that it's only going to take me four hours. All right, so let's get some more room at the top here. People to time, we can say, are going to vary inversely compared to each other. Now, let's go back to the original scenario. One person can complete the problems of one chapter in eight hours. What did they actually want to know about? They wanted to know how many people would be required to complete all 30 chapters in 24 hours. So we have three times as much time as we did before, but we're also tackling 30 times as much work. To get here, just like we did before, let's imagine one one item staying constant, and then let's solve for the other item. So let's leave the one person alone for just a moment. Let's say that, yeah, we're gonna keep just one person working. If I triple the amount of time that I have available, I should be able to get three times as much work done. Because again, chapters to time was a direct relationship. One way to see this is utilizing cross products. So whenever I have two items that relate directly, I'm essentially setting up a proportion, and cross products on a proportion are always equal. One 1 times 24, of course, is 24, and then 8 times, you know, we could call it x or whatever, is 8x. If I have 8x equals 24, solving for x is 3. Or again, if I just notice, oh, to get from 8 to 24, I need to multiply by 3, then in a direct relationship, I'll also need to multiply that other quantity by 3. So either way, that one person working for 24 hours, three times as much time, is going to be able to complete three times as many chapters. Now, the trick, of course, is we didn't want to complete three chapters. We wanted to complete 30 chapters. So we need to figure out how many people we have to get together to get those 30 chapters done in 24 hours. So you'll notice in this case, it's the 24 that we're leaving constant. Because people to chapters was direct, we should be able to, once again, use cross products or set up a proportion or just kind of reason through the math here. If we have 10 times as many chapters that we're completing, but we're going to do it in the same 24 hours, we need 10 times as many people. And again, if you set up cross products, 1 times 30 is 30. 30 equals 3 times y or something. y would be 30 divided by 3 makes 10. So it must be the case that I need 10 people to get the 30 chapters of this physics textbook completed, all the problems completed, in 24 hours. We can go ahead and type that into our system, submit our answer, and yes, we got it correct. Let's tackle another one, and we're gonna use the table again, but this time let's also think through what the equation would look like for a joint variation. I've got a chicken problem here. Five chickens eat 10 bags of scratch in 20 days. How many bags of scratch would be needed to feed 40 chickens for a year? Noting, let's get a few objections out of the way, it's not a leap year, and bags of scratch can only be purchased in whole number increments. Let's set up a similar kind of table comparing chickens to feed as measured in some number of bags of scratch compared to time, this time not measured in hours, but instead measured in days. Now, I really should be a little bit more careful here. There's no guarantee that the three quantities here are going to relate precisely the same way they did a moment ago. But I've cheated a little bit. I've read ahead, and I promise you I've got the relationships right here. If you have more chickens, you need more feed. So chickens to feed is direct. If you have more feed, but you hold the chickens constant, it will last for a longer amount of time. So feed to time is also a direct variation. But if you hold the amount of feed constant and you get more chickens, you'll be able to feed them for less time. Or if you eat a few of your chickens, then you're gonna be able to feed them for longer from the same amount of feed. So the relationships at the top here are the same. Chickens to feed is direct, feed to time is direct, but then chickens to time is inverse. Now the initial scenario we're given is that five chickens eat 10 bags of feed in 20 days. But again, this time I do wanna try and set up an equation. It's not required to do it this way, but a good habit to be in is to let your time go in the denominator as you attempt to set this up. We're going to set up some k and we're going to set it equal to the number of bags of feed 
divided by chickens times time. The reasoning here is this. We know that chickens and time relate to each other inversely. And so when we set up our equation, like I said at the beginning of the video, it doesn't really matter if we do this as a numerator or a denominator, but wherever the things that relate inversely go, they have to go in as a product. So we're gonna put in chicken time, some number of chicken days that we're gonna split up our feed over. We put time in the denominator, again, not required, but just as a nice convention, because that's gonna basically give us back a unit rate. What we're coming up with here is some number of bags per chicken days. On the other hand, feed goes in the numerator because we know feed to chickens relates directly, so that needs to look like a ratio, and feed to time also relates directly, so again, it needs to look like a ratio. Like I said, doing it this way essentially lets us set up a unit rate. We've got 10 bags of feed that we're splitting up over five chickens for 20 days. Each one of those five chickens is fed for 20 days, and so that's like 100 chicken days. 10 over 100 is, of course, 1 tenth, and so basically what we get here is we can feed one chicken with a tenth of a bag for a single day, or that's 1 tenth bags of feed per chicken day. Now, how does that help me with the actual question here? First of all, let's go back to our table. We are now trying to feed 40 chickens, and we're trying to get it done for 365 days. That's a full year. Essentially what we can do now is set this up almost like an inverse variation or a direct variation where we're setting two things equal to each other. It's just instead of only being a product or only being a ratio, it's a combination of the two. We know that we want this side over here to always work out to that unit rate that we came up with, one tenth bag per chicken day. This time though, we don't know the amount of feed because that's what we're solving for. So let's just call that something like F. And we're trying to feed 40 chickens over 365 days. So that is whatever 40 times 365 is in chicken days. You'll notice once we write it this way, we're essentially back to a regular old ratio where we can use cross products in order to solve for our unknown. 10 times F is of course 10F, and then 40 times 365, I guess we need to go ahead and figure out, it should be 14,600, if I've done the math correctly in my head. In order to solve for F here, of course, oh wait, that's probably behind my head, isn't it? I'll just move myself around. We'll divide by 10, divide by 10, and we get that the number of bags of feed must be 1,460. Over in Delta Math, we can type that in, 1460, submit our answer, and we can see yes. We have properly identified how many bags of scratch we would need to feed eight times as many chickens in 18 and change times as much time. I hope you have found that helpful. Again, joint variation, a clever though somewhat disconcerting combination between direct variation and inverse variation. If you have any questions, comment down below, and otherwise I will see y'all next time.